guys, welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, last episode was in April. It was still uh, pretty chilly in the night. This time it's in the middle of summer, it's June. Uh, we're still uh, outside of Bergen and uh, we're going to have a few days on the road. Um, I will show you some, uh, some sights, some views, uh, some inexpensive uh, ways of traveling uh, through Norway. Um, I can show you my setup here. I uh, just basically rigged my car, attached my bicycle and uh, on the internals in the car I will, uh, I will tell you about uh, at a later, later stage. We're just off the main road um, so there will be some traffic noise uh, now um, but we'll, we'll uh, try to make some, uh, some headway today. We're going to Lardal and uh, to see some sights there. Uh, further on to Ålesund area uh, to see the Atlantic uh, road and also try to to do something with the uh, Trollstigen. So uh, welcome to this adventure, a couple of days in the field. Uh, we'll try to do it as uh, inexpensive and as, uh, as uh, exciting as possible. Okay, welcome guys, let's go. Exciting stuff. I'm in the middle of a railroad track, still uh, outside Bergen, not reached Anna yet. It's a place called Haukeland. Uh, this is a veteran train, so the, the train only runs once a week. It's maintained and serviced by an ideal organization. Uh, and if you want to check it out, if you are here in the neighborhood, um, I will put the link in the description below. So uh, it's possible to book some tickets. And, uh, and enjoy this ride. It's a couple of kilometers, I think seven, eight kilometers, but it's a, it's a fun ride. Nice to know.
Tunheimen. This is a national park, and uh, as you see, this is a hostile environment. I will show you some pictures of uh, a couple of my friends, which I met earlier. My plan was to uh, make a meal up here, um, but on the second thought, maybe I should uh, drive on a little bit, get lower into the terrain where there's at least one tree. <laughs> Incredible. It's 13 degrees centigrade, uh, it's raining and uh, yeah, I just came from 20 degrees and light overcast. So. This is the situation up here. Your name. Here we go. This is a uh, really nice nature. We're still in uh, Jotunheimen, but uh, this time at maybe 800 meters altitude. So the mosquitoes are here and uh, they are trying to get a grab of us. Okay, uh, I have just made myself something to eat. So now we're gonna continue a little bit further down, approximately to three, 400 meters. And then, uh, then I'll show you a couple of things. and uh, it's 11 p.m. 5 minutes to 11 p.m. At, uh, in the evening and if you see behind me the sun is just above the mountain tops over there I'm probably not going to catch it now because it's going to be down in one hour or something and it's a little bit too far away but uh, it's 11 p.m. now and we are south of Trondheim we're not even close to the Arctic Circle so imagine the summer's here, end of June. Well, only 10 minutes later and uh, seems like I'm catching up or, to it. <laughs> so this is an incredible sensation. I'm going to find a place to camp for tonight. But the little thing I want to show you on the other side, there's a rainbow. And it's 10 minutes past 11 at night. And there's a rainbow there. The only way a rainbow can form is if the sun hits raindrops so uh, <laughs> there's the proof for you the sun is just there good morning day two and it's raining Hi guys, day two, after a short and efficient breakfast, uh, we're on our way to Undalsnes, which is uh, further out towards the western coast from the mountains. We are now at just a couple of hundred meters above sea level, but look at this river behind me. I will uh, try to get some good footage. Sorry guys, the best rivers in the world.
look at that. Found this location here. We can still still hear the river, but uh, it's a little bit more secluded. So uh, yeah, thinking uh, this will be a perfect spot for a for a lunch. Never leave home without this. When you're in a semi-urban environment, which means that yeah, you will be visiting civilian locations, be with civilian people, please don't bring a big knife, not in these days. A little pocket knife, this one is uh, from Victorinox, perfect, sharp as hell, small, fits in a pocket, perfect for it. So let's get down to bacon earring. I just cleaned up, so there is no sign that I was ever here. Uh, everything is in my backpack. Uh, I will show you some minor issue. You see down there is the eggshell. Well, that's just calcium, so nature needs this. <laughs> it will disappear in a day or two. I discovered something while uh, while I was walking around here, just to have a quick look. 
and um, it actually is quite a, quite a system of trails here uh, just below the Tolstigen I will show you and these trails to me actually look like they could be ridden on a bike I will uh, I will investigate a little bit. I will take down my bike from a car and we'll have a spin to see if they are if they are doable. You see the only sign here is the Gösteen Trollstig Foten to the foot of the Troll uh, Trollstein. Um, but there are only trackers on it. This kind of uh, surface gets to you on a bike. The, those routes are extremely slippery, so uh, and pretty well hidden, also. So it's difficult to see when one appears and the other one disappears. So uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to ride a little bit back and forth just to check out the trails. But these ones are probably more suitable for tracking. Tracking they're perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Hours on in. Woo. Nice. Alright guys. 40 minutes. And that was it. But uh, it's a beautiful track. Beautiful location. Let's move on uh, to uh, Atlanta half day. Sorry guys, I tried avoiding this uh, all day yesterday and uh, yeah, I managed to do so but today we have to use some ferries to get across it will cut down the uh, travel time with six hours uh, to do so but then again this first ferry is on time and the second one I'm already been notified over the digital audio broadcasting that it's out of order and uh, the two next uh, passages are cancelled so we'll uh, have to see how that uh, how that develops but uh, for now welcome aboard this ferry I had to pay 109 krona which is okay something that has to be dealt with um, and I got a pamphlet about the safety instructions on board um, it looks like it has been used or kept in the pocket for a long long time nevertheless it's okay to to be aware, familiar, familiarize yourself with the different signals and and stuff. And it's not allowed to use the cell phone while uh, embarking and disembarking. <laughs> Remember that. engineering marvel unfortunately there are no big waves and wind today but uh, during storms this is a real real treat
yesterday to make a little, uh, a little take a little break uh, from uh, from the outdoor life. Got a shower, uh, got some relaxation in the evening, and uh, now it's time for breakfast. All right, guys, it's time to plan the rest of the trip. We are here in uh, Kristiansund, and uh, just to see how it is compared to other cities. And as you see, we have plotted in the coordinates and the route, and uh, it's nine hours and 40 minutes of driving. With this route, this we took up here, so this was our our trip up and now we're turning we're turning directly down so we're going to go by we might go by Gerano just to have a look and then we go by uh, through the stream Invik, Utvik and to Førde and back home Alright guys, before we leave, I'm just going to go back into the hotel and see if I can get some coffee. It's included in the breakfast, isn't it? Ha! <laughs> Success! So, we're set for a couple of hours. It's the little things, isn't it? show you a little uh, fun fact uh, we're not going to turn left of course we're not going to the airport we're going straight ahead but uh, notice the yellow poles mounted in the middle of the road and in the surrounding area of the roundabout so we are actually driving underneath the signaling light for the <laughs> for the entry path of uh, the airport you see that's uh, maximum exploration of the uh, available area advantage of uh, glass ceiling. <laughs> I can pay attention to what's going on with my bike at all times. Uh, when that water bottle falls off, it means I'm going too fast. <laughs> no, it's a good, uh, good solution. And uh, if you're driving at night, you see the stars. Even though this is a three-day trip, uh, you have to take into account the cost of fuel. Uh, your car is run by something, either it's uh, petrol or it's diesel. Uh, I will show you the prices. And this is a fair, fair amount that you need to calculate in. If you drive an electric car, uh, I will put uh, a link into the description below where you can find an overview of uh, charging stations all across the country and uh, there is really no problem with it. You have to calculate some more time, that's it. And uh, sorry for the noise. This is normal while moving around in the tra trafficked area. But yeah, I will put the, I'll put the description, uh, I'll describe the charging stations 
uh, several types. There's the quick charger, there's the normal charger, and uh, basically you can uh, calculate uh, if you want to take a meal, if you want to have a lunch, then you can uh, you can stay there for an hour, an hour and a half. And the most most of the charging stations will charge your car uh, within 35 minutes maximum from 20 to 85 percent or something on the quick charge stations 50 kilovolts today's first uh, trip on a ferry is from Molde to Vestnes and uh, it's supposed to save us an hour and a half of driving so uh, even though we are not in a rush I was planning to take the main route from uh, Kristiansund to Bergen and uh, not deviate too much because of scenic routes and so on so uh, okay we'll uh, entering the first ferry I stopped at this uh, truck stop, road stop, um, it's called uh, Fjellstova, a couple of kilometers south of the ferry that we just took. It's 13 degrees out uh, in the middle of, or at the end of June, so it's nothing to brag about really. Uh, it's not uh, too comfortable temperature, that's why the jacket. Uh, this is a pretty advanced truck stop, uh, you'll have simpler ones, I think I will pass about 25 or 30 of them within the, the three days uh, we're on the road now. Um, this one has uh, all sorts of other facilities. The charging stations, those are Teslas. And you see there is a, basically a park of charging stations. Uh, there is also a possibility to rent uh, some uh, fat bikes and, um, and some uh, go-karts and stuff. So as you see, it's uh, just on the main road uh, and good facilities. Toilet facilities are available at almost all. I think, um, uh, okay, maybe half, half of the truck stop have toilet facilities. So while we wait uh, for the water to boil, and we'll have us a cup of coffee, we can, uh, we can have this little conversation. So the, of course I could just go in there and buy myself a cup of coffee. That's not the point of this trip. So, uh, and the mosquitoes are here. Again, be aware that there are a lot of, uh, could be a lot of mosquitoes during the summer, especially in uh, marshlands or wet, wet areas. This is not the, not the typical wet, wetland, but uh, still there are, there are mosquitoes. And little little flies that bite they don't do you any harm but they still bite and it's painful that I did have some sunshine on this trip. <laughs> uh, we're going to Geiranga. Geiranga is uh, yeah, one of the most famous fjords. We'll see some sights. Did have nice weather on this trip. 
and uh, the advantage of ferries again. A little coffee break and a chance to catch this. Everybody is standing outside, enjoying the view. Approaching the final stretch before Gerang of Hill. Look at that scenery. location to to make a lunch today yeah <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this we are in Geiranger and uh, I will show you some photos afterwards it's a beautiful place really really beautiful one of the best in Norway and uh, it is a tourist magnet so everybody's coming here I will explain also some of the some of the challenges that has been regards to in regards to pollution and stuff to find this location i just uh, spotted where the pictures were taken i just spotted a, uh, a small trail going up with some form of gate but it was open and there were visual signs that people are frequently going up and down this trail so i just packed my backpack and uh, Left the car there. There's a parking space, a uh, uh, parking uh, area where, where the cars uh, can be left. Uh, I don't think we can stay there for many, many hours or maybe for days, but uh, at least for, for a quick lunch, no problem whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, my recommendation is look for these little, little uh, golden sweet spots. A small trail, just walk in there five minutes, ten minutes, see what it, what's in there. You haven't lost anything of your life, but uh, you can gain this. Welcome. All right, guys, this will be a really, really tasty meal. I think, uh, including the view, this will be one of the top four. This is 10 minutes since we were down in Geranger, driving up and up and up and up, zigzagging upwards towards the top of the mountain. Now we have from 18 degrees to 13 degrees and uh, if you look closely there is snow around us. Not all places. What happened, you say? Not quite sure. But we're still in Norway with the snow and the Norwegian flag up there. And we have something here in Geranga on the top of the mountain. It's called Geranga Skywalk. So uh, it's the Europe's highest fjord view from a road. Imagine that. So it looks like it's clearing up. We can get some uh, view up here. But uh, look at this. Thank God. I'm soon to get rid of that view. There has been so many buses here. Anyone up for a cold and relaxing bath? <laughs> yeah?
myself another cup of coffee. I will show you around. I'm on my way to Strin from uh, Geranger. And uh, as you probably saw, I just drove through a couple of tunnels and I wanted to discuss some issues with you. If you've never been to Norway and uh, you're considering uh, visiting, you're welcome. And, um, but please be aware, there are a few, I few things you need to be aware of in regards to your car. Um, the choice of the car, um, if you have a small petrol engine, it might work, but you will slow down the traffic. Um, your brakes need to be in order. Uh, some of the turns and bends, and uh, as you saw in the last uh, picture of that cabin on the top of the mountain, was over a thousand meters up and now we're going back down to three four hundred meters again so the the altitude changes rapidly there are zigzag turns all the time you need to make sure that your clutch is in order that your engine is uh, in order and uh, your brakes oh my god um, I have I have an automatic mine is 1.2 liter petrol engine and it's an automatic transmission but it's not a hydraulic automatic transmission it's some sort of belt system or whatever. I never quite figured it out. But um, I actually smelled burnt clutch on my way up through some of the zigzags um, from my own car. There wasn't any other car around us. So that's just to be aware. I had to change over to, to the forest gearing, uh, the manual gearing, and gear it from second to third, second to third all the time, uh, just to make all the bends and turns. But again, I have seen a couple of cars broken down uh, or at least it looks like they're broken down you know people were people were running around checking in the temperature of the brakes and, and stuff so it is, a, it is it is an issue of concern if you drive the electric car um, I'm not quite sure what you need to be aware of uh, the charging stations are in abundance um, maybe not on the top of the mountain so if you if you're planning on going to Geranga for example and uh, going down one day and the other the same day up again, you need to make sure that you have uh, enough uh, charging time in Geranga to make sure that uh, you can make the whole trip. So, and by the time the water boils, by the time the coffee is done, I have here also my mandatory cookie. So, uh, this will be good. Ooh, perfect. Meantime, enjoy the view. And in a little place called Loom, we have a beach. Why not? There's a big cruise ship around the corner, so I won't show you that. on our way to Förde and the final stretch of the road uh, I'm planning on uh, sleeping over in uh, Flora it's uh, out by the coast furthest that you can get basically in the open uh, North Sea so uh, yeah I'm just gonna wash up and, uh, and continue we have one hour 30 minutes left from Mjölstad to, to Flora so uh, yeah Pretty tired today. It's um, 7 uh, 30 p.m. So uh, basically, we've been driving, been driving all night, all day. And uh, yeah, need to wash up a little bit. Before we leave, I found something. Pick it up.
sunset into Fluga, but I think it's a slim chance that we're going to see a sunset today with the cloudy and the foggy weather. But yeah, let's try. Sorry guys, no hope of a sunset today. And we are in Flora. Hmm. Too bad. I just left uh, Flora. Uh, last night I couldn't catch the, the sunset, so this time I did catch the sunrise, and it's nice. Sorry about the noise. Just stopped at a truck stop, normal uh, rest stop, um, to actually address one final issue before I go. Um, you know, you have seen the sights. And you see the beautiful mountains, and then we see this, this slaughterhouse and polluters. That's my personal opinion. I'm willing to take comments in the in the area down below, but. Uh, yeah, they are polluting uh, Norwegian fjords. Uh, it is a business and it is a resource and it's, uh, it should be taken care of. And there are other ways of doing it instead of like this. Uh, the noise, by the way, was the feeding, automatic feeding system. But uh, yeah, it kills off the bottom. All the sediment falls down to the bottom and kills all marine life in that location. So they have to move them a couple of weeks in between or months. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, how often but yeah uh, th there are patents on the way to to be able to do this on land and to filter all the water going both in and out so yeah that was my last moral talk or the only basically moral talk except for the fact that uh, yeah there is not much to pick up with us people are in general generally good at uh, picking up the trash. I thought maybe I should count salmon as the last animal or fish uh, that I filmed on this trip. <laughs> okay, sorry, cheap shot.